In today's video, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite tips and tricks from within Adobe Illustrator. I'm also gonna show you a brand new feature that's just come out with Adobe CC 2023. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. So this first tip is really easy to do and it's a more efficient way than duplicating shapes and manually creating clipping masks. So I've got this simple leaf here that I want to add some shadow to. Now in the past I would have made a duplicate of the base leaf shape, drawn in the shadow and use a duplicate version to make a clipping mask. But this method is much easier than that and it's called the draw inside mode and you can locate this at the bottom of the toolbar. And to create the shadow I'm going to select the leaf shape, toggle the draw inside mode to activate it and you will see this square bounding box. At this point you can use any tool to create the shadow but for this one I'm going to be using the pen tool. Once I've created the shape I'm going to change the shade of the colour and when I exit out of the mode you can see that this has stayed within the leaf shape. To edit any path or shape you created just double click on the shape and you can tweak it to your heart's content. This is super useful and it saves you from duplicating shapes like I said earlier which can make your life a hell of a lot easier especially if you're creating something that is quite complex. The next tip is using the pencil tool to create custom shapes. If you watched my last video, I used this to create a custom sticker shape. The key to this one is making sure that the settings for the tool are correct. So here are the settings that I use. Feel free to copy them and just adjust them if needed. So I've got this type and I want to create a drip effect. So the first thing I need to do is turn this live text into shapes. So I'm going to create a duplicate and press command shift O, which is going to turn the text into outlines. And this is where I can edit the shapes. I'm just going to ungroup the shape so I can edit each letter form at a time. Then I'm going to select the D, grab my pencil tool and just draw in the droopy shapes. This is definitely trial and error. So don't worry if you don't get the desired outcome on your first try. And this is a great way to add or detract from shapes. The pencil tool can be a great option in these situations. A favourite feature of mine is Image Trace because I create illustrations in Procreate on my iPad and sometimes I need to bring them into Illustrator to vector them for personal or client work. And so the Image Trace tool is essential for me to do that. And I've got this illustration that I've made that I brought in from Procreate. It's a PNG image so I need to make it into a vector image so I can edit it in Illustrator and save it out to whatever size without losing quality. In order for me to do that I'm going to select the image Go to my preference tab and select image trace. Personally, I like to add color after I vector my illustrations so I can be really precise with the image trace settings. And it'll also make it easier for Illustrator to convert it as well. And I'm going to choose default here because it's just a black and white image. And it's gonna give me a preview of what it will look like when I click expand. Now I want to bring back some of that texture that I had in the brush that I used so that lines aren't perfectly smooth. And to do that, I'm going to click on this tab and tweak the settings for the trace. If I want to thicken everything out, then I will increase the threshold so the Illustrator can bring back some of that black. I'm also going to increase the paths. This will bring a lot of the rough edges back as it adds more anchor points. And I'm going to bring the corners all the way down so there's no shop corners. And I'm also going to bring down the noise slider so the Illustrator maintains the original illustration as much as possible. And the last thing to do is enable ignore white as I don't want the white box around the artwork. Now I can hit expand and this is now a vector piece of art which I can tweak and also add colour to. Speaking of colour, this next trick is super useful in aiding you in quickly previewing a colour palette that is applied to your work. Let's say I've got this logo that I did in my last video for a vegan cheese brand called Cheddar. Maybe the colours are just not right, so you want to change them, but you don't want to manually change each colour individually. Especially if you want to try out a few different colour palettes to see which you think works the best. Now this is just three colours, so it's quite simple, but this method works just as well on really complex art and endless colours. Once I've grouped everything together, I'm going to select edit in the top bar, edit colours, and then recolor artwork. A quicker way to access this is to click on this little colour wheel button at the top here, which will take you straight to the tool. Next, I'm going to go to advanced options, which is where I'm going to make the colour changes. And you can see on the right my colour palettes that I've created. And to preview these palettes, I just need to click on the group, which will change the colours in just one click. 
And to mix up the colors, all you need to do is click this button here, which will randomly change the order of the colors as well. So let's say I like this one and to solidify my choice, I just need to click OK and that's it. This is a super powerful way of previewing and applying different color palettes to your designs. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to show you a brand new tool in the latest version of Illustrator and this is called Intertwine. Essentially, this allows you to take two objects and flip the order of the specific area that you choose. The benefit of this is that you can interlock paths without cutting out shapes and paths or having to use duplicates. So for this example, I'm going to use these two paths that I've created and I'm going to interlace certain sections. In the past, I would have cut out certain sections that I want to hide, but with this new tool, I can do this without working destructively. And once I have decided where I want to use this tool, I'm going to select both objects, go to object, intertwine, and then make. This is going to give me a lasso tool, which I can use to tell Illustrator which two paths that I want to invert. And this is really easy to do. Now, if you want to change your mind about the placement, I found this to be a bit hit and miss as if you move an object once you've applied this, then it may not translate very well. However, I can see this being a real time saver and a much easier way of portraying this effect. And I think this is a great addition to the tool belt that you've got inside Illustrator. And there you have it. That is my top five tips and tricks within Adobe Illustrator. I'm really pumped to try out the new intertwine feature a little bit more. And I can definitely tell already that it's going to make my life a lot easier. And if you have already tried it out, then please let us know in the comments what you think to it. And I hope you've learned at least one sort of new trick that you can deploy in your own work as well. And if you have, then don't forget to drop a like, comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. And until the next one, I will see you in a bit.